All right, hello, welcome everyone. Welcome, it is Tuesday, September 1st. I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to our Avid Audio Community plugin. We're back, it's Tuesday. Um, first, I want to do thank uh, Simon Sherborne and Nick Fry from the farm last week. Uh, had a really great webinar. Uh, I, I was out of the office, uh, out of uh, working on some stuff uh, here in the studio last week. So I, I, but I was able to attend for a few minutes, and, and I thought it was great. So again, thank you to Simon. Thank you to Nick. Uh, for those of you who were able to uh, attend, uh, really, really great uh, webinar last week. Uh, we've got a great one today as well. So again, welcome to everyone here, whether you're here on our Zoom, if you registered for our webinar, you're here in Zoom, uh, but you might also be uh, checking this out live right now, whether it's on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you might be in the world on whatever platform, welcome. We're really glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Greg Chin. I am the audio evangelist for Avid um, based here in Miami, Florida. And we've got a great session for you guys today. So I'm uh, in, a, in a minute or so. I'm going to hand it over to our our uh, our host uh, today, uh, Gaurav Harish, who's going to walk us through some some essentials around uh, and about setting up a home studio. Gaurav's built. He's based in the UK. He's uh, ha, uh, built his uh, his studio at home, uh, actually during during lockdown during quarantine. And um, he's going to talk us through a little bit of that and some, some best practices there. So before we jump into that, um, I just wanted to quickly kind of walk through uh, some best practices here um, and uh, just some housekeeping, uh, so to speak. So to get, you know, for those of you who are here who registered for the webinar, who are here uh, on our Zoom, a couple of things I wanted to point out uh, so that you have the best webinar experience possible. So. You'll notice on the top right-hand corner um, of, your, uh, of, of your Zoom application, make sure you've got gallery view selected rather than speaker view. Now today we don't have a panel, so to speak, but once we get into the Q&A portion, a couple of us might appear on screen. Uh, and this way you, you're able to kind of see everyone and interact with everyone um, kind of as a group rather than just you know looking at whoever's speaking at that moment. It might make things a little bit easier for you. Also, um, if you happen to see any of the non-video participants on your screen, you can go ahead and hide those folks uh, so that they don't clutter your screen uh, and take up all your real estate. So if uh, right directly to the right of your mute button, a little mute button, you'll see these uh, uh, three dots. You can click that and then select hide non-video participants um, so that frees up some real estate uh, in your screen. So we will have a Q&A portion, so around quarter till, uh, Gaurav will, will kind of, uh, you know, open it up for some Q&A. We will be taking, we've got some moderators uh, on all the platforms I just mentioned. So you can ask some, some questions there and here. Uh, we'll be taking questions myself, uh, Dave Tyler is here, Gil Gowling is here as well. We're going to be kind of answering questions as we go along uh, to help out. Uh, but, we'll, you know, some of these questions that are specifically uh, for Gora, we'll, we'll make sure we kind of hold them uh, until the Q&A portion so he can continue going through his, his presentation. And then we'll ask, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, start tossing these questions over to Gorav during the Q&A. So if you want to ask a question here uh, on the Zoom, very simple, you'll just click the Q&A icon on your menu bar and then type your question. Please give as much detail as possible. Um, and then we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. We, we don't uh, always get to every single one of them. Uh, but again, myself, Dave, Gill, will do our best to help answer. And of course, Gorav will answer them live um, uh, in the Q&A portion of, of, the, uh, of the presentation. So uh, if you've got any questions, type them there. Please keep them uh, respectful. You know, this is a safe space, but we want to make sure we're respectful of each other and uh, certainly of our, of our, of our, of our guests. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I'd like to turn it over and welcome um, our, our, our you know, presenter today. So Gaurav Harish is a, a, an application specialist here at Avid. Um, he's based in the UK. He's an amazing producer and artist. Um, I've I'm, I'm really been loving the music that, that, that uh, I've, I've heard uh, of his, and he's going to walk us through some of that as well. Um, so with that, I think I'd like to turn it over to Gaurav. Gaurav, how are you, man? Hey, Greg. Thank you so much for that great intro. Um, Hey everyone, so I'm Gaurav, um, and today I'm actually joined in the studio by one of my artists and one of my good friends. Um, this is Varose, and um, he's a singer-songwriter as well as myself, songwriter, producer, and an engineer um, from London, UK. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys through how I built this studio um, in my house in London. 
during lockdown um you know so it was a it was a great period where i had some time and i thought you know what i'm going to build a studio so today's webinar i'm going to actually talk about how i did it the steps i took and actually where i uh, where i actually started from so you know i i came um i, I started music kind of back in 2000 and let's say 10 11 um you know just seeing a lot of videos online and stuff like that um which kind of got me to the point where you know i I was like, hey, I want to, I want to start recording, you know, I want to, I want to start singing. I couldn't sing, I couldn't songwrite, but it was just something that I saw online, and I was like, I want to do that too, you know. And I was a huge fan, and still a huge fan of Drake. Now, Drake, as you know, he's a great R and B, um, hip hop, and kind of he's taken over pop music, you know, and he's always in our charts. And um, I'm inspired by kind of the work that he does. But as well as that, I'm inspired by how his vocals get re recorded, and how everything that he's done previously on his last albums and everything, how it all got re recorded. So back in 2012, you know, um, a video came up, and it was by one of his producers called Ovio Forty, and it was a video that they done with uh, Avid and Pro Tools, and it was showing the S5 Fusion. And when I saw that, I was just inspired, and I was like, Hey, I want to, I want to have that guy's job. I want to, <laughs> I want to know what he does. You know, he seems like such a cool guy. And that was kind of how I initially kind of broke into, let's say, digital recording and just into the music kind of world. You know, it was just such a, um, it was just such a huge world. And back then we had a M Audio Fast Track in my studio, which was like a small interface. You know, it's got a um, in and out, and it had a gain knob on top. You know, to record vocals, and it was just like a small version that came with a free version of Pro Tools. And again, I had no idea how to use it. I was a beginner, and I just really wanted to dive into that world. So. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm actually going to show you what my studio initially looked like. And then I'm going to show you how we kind of um, moved over to, into kind of this studio, what it's become now, you know. So as you see, it looks pretty nice now, but it, it was never like that at the beginning. So I'm going to uh, show you guys now. So we're going to begin with the first image. Now, this was back in 2012. Now, as you see, I had no idea where anything goes. I had no idea how to kind of set up your mic or where the mic should be placed or where my monitor should be. And I mean, it's just, it's kind of the beginning steps of how I started music. And I look pretty cool with the, with the hat on backwards as well, back in 2012, I'd, I'd never do that now. <laughs> um, so for a start, I had my guitar right in front of me, you know, I don't know why I did that. It was just great space to put something. So I thought I put the guitar, you know, I had my, uh, B Tech Civica, and I was like, let me frame it and put it there so I can look at it every day. And then I had my monitor at the bottom, and I had a computer monitor at the top. Uh, I don't know why I actually did that, but you know, it was just again using all the space I had. And then I had a small mixer just at the bottom, um, and some two PC speakers there. So when I initially started this kind of this this room was tiny, you know, it was like a little box room, um, and it was yeah, it was just a room my dad had kind of had spare and was like, hey, look, go in there and you know, take your computer desk from your room and start setting up a studio and i was like yeah cool i'll do that and um i, I put my uh, small little speakers that i had the monitors in on the corners one in kind of the middle one at the top and again i had no i don't know where speaker placement was i don't know what acoustic treatment was i didn't know how to trap sound um and i didn't know how to record you know this is again it's just all beginner really beginner stuff that i kind of i had to go through to get to the point where i was today so it came now to lockdown you know 2020 has come around march 24th me and my dad actually decided that there was a space in the garage that we thought, you know what, let's actually start building a studio there because now I've had all the knowledge and, you know, I've worked in bigger studios and working at Pro Tools and stuff and Avid. Uh, it just made sense that I, I want to build somewhere where I can work, a creative space where artists like Rose can come down, you know, and going back to Rose, he's wrote several records before uh, with labels and everyone. I want people like Rose to feel like they're in a com comfortable environment where they can write, they can track vocals, and they could listen to great music, you know, that they're recording. So in day one over here, as you can see, we started building the frame. We started placing kind of insulation on the walls between the door and the, the frame. And that kind of started creating a little bit of um, kind of deadening the sound from that wall, you know, started thickening it up a little bit. And again, I, I'm no expert with acoustic treatment or soundproofing or anything like that. So everything was just stuff that I've learned from online. But I'll go into that in a second as well. So back on day three now, we started doing the same thing that we did to the walls, but on the floor. And as you see, the, the actual wood uh, panels that we've got, they were just spare wood panels that we had in the garage, uh, in, the, in the garden, that my dad was like, look, they're going to waste. Let's just try using the material we've got. So as you see, it's a lot of old material that we've used. And on to the right-hand side now, day five, is when we fi finished everything, we kind of done the electrical stuff. We put in some spotlights at the top, and it just started to look more like a room, you know? So just flicking off over here, 
you can see that I've got my desk now slowly going to start coming in and we've, we've painted the walls to white because for myself, um, you know, I, I wanted to create a kind of, I wanted to paint the walls like black, you know, cause I've seen it so many studios, but then I wanted to feel like more airy and more spacious and, you know, going on Google, going on YouTube, a lot of people had painted their rooms white. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this with spotlight. So it just feels like a bigger room. And that's exactly what I did. And actually it really helped, you know, white flooring, white walls, white ceiling. Uh, it was great. And to the right now is what you have kind of on day seven when I say it was complete, you know, it had all the stuff in it that I had from before my, my MacBook and some panels that I created and this tiny little base trap in the corner, which <laughs> didn't do much, but you know, I expanded it to what it is today. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's the kind of progression in seven days you're in lockdown that I thought me and my dad were like, we need to create somewhere where I can, you know, go and just write and have people over eventually when lockdown's over. And we can, um, yeah, and we could, we could just, I could just write. So that was that. So what I'm going to talk about now, actually, is um, I'm going to go off to kind of my creative environment. You know, as you saw, that was my studio on day seven. But from then as well, it started to kind of change a little bit. So I'm just going to flick, um, I'm just going to show you kind of where I've placed everything at the minute. So as you can see, this is my comfortable environment right now. You see, I have my MPK keyboard for when I'm doing creative stuff like MIDI's and sampling and you know beat production and stuff like that i have my s1 over here for when i'm mixing i have my interface which is by focus right uh, just over here in front of me and then i have my macbook you know and everything's at arm's reach because i've made it here now as you see i've got a studio desk but from the first picture i showed you you know you could start from just a simple desk or like a plank of wood against the wall anything where you can just play stuff and for me personally it's all about where everything is placed and just making sure it's at arm's reach you know, even from day one, as you saw that picture, it was all about arm's reach. I wanted to make sure my mixer, and even to this day, my mixer's still on my left-hand side. You know, the interface is still in front of me, and my speakers are, again, just over behind me. So, uh, in front of me, sorry. So, that was kind of, like, all about my studio and kind of where I want to place everything. You know, I have a mouse and keyboard over here, which I can pull back and forth. And from this desk, I have kind of had several other desks, which worked for a while, but then they didn't work as well. Now, this is probably the maximum size desk I can get in this studio. But if I had a choice again, if I had a bigger budget, I could definitely get a bigger desk, you know, and have a bigger console, whatever I'd love to do. Uh, I'd love to have in there. So that would be great. And another thing that I like working with to get myself feeling creative, as well as the artist that I'm with, is by having lights in the room. So I'm a big fan of having lights, you know, mood lighting and kind of just, just lots of lights for just myself to work in, as well as the artists and the songwriters I'm with. So as you see where Rose is sitting now, I have some purple mood lighting going around. And then if he was gonna track sometimes, he might wanna just turn off the main light, the spotlight, just so he feels like he's in the vibe. And sometimes I have rappers or artists who come in and they, they want bright lights and they wanna turn the mood lights off and just have more kind of, you know, um, brighter light. And again, there's no right or wrong to this. And just going back to learning off YouTube, uh, again, there's no right and wrong, you know, everything um, kind of everything can be right, everything can be wrong. It's all about trial and error. So just keep trying different things in your studio that works for you specifically. Um, and then also have kind of little things that you can maybe change so it works for someone else who you're working with. So for example, sometimes Veroz, he likes to write next to me and have the mic next to me right over here. Um, so I might have to move away my, my keyboard, I might have to move my S1 to the right or my interface. And everything is easily done so again it's just having um the option of moving stuff around which is great you know so that takes me on now to cable management and how important it is to me to actually um have cable management in the studio so when we were building the studio i was like to my dad i was like oh there's so many cables sticking out like this is kind of it's it's, it's killing my ocd you know i want to i want to somehow get all my cables so no one can see them so what we did was we googled a little bit went on amazon and we purchased some really cheap um, they're called cable snakes and they basically allow you to pop about six cables into a snake and then it just keeps it in one snake and then just chuck it kind of to the back of the room you know and everything's compiled into a single kind of thick looking cable snake um, and then we cable tied it off and we just you know and now that's exactly how I've done all my cables at the back of the studio now again um, that was something that I did on a budget there's probably other ways that you could do I've seen people have more kind of boxes, they've built boxes and stuff like that. But again, with me, I just wanted a quick, easy fix. Um, and at that point it was just go on Amazon and try and cable ties or cable snake and that, you know, that came up. So, and again, the best thing about kind of 
uh, like this day and age, which is fantastic, is the ability to, uh, like we've all got YouTube, you know, you can go on YouTube, you can write in how to tidy your studio, how to build a studio, or how to set up your studio, and loads of options will come up, and you can keep viewing these, you know, write some notes of what you could do to your studio. And again, one, one kind of tip is whatever they do in their studio, and you do in yours, it's, it's never going to be the same because the space will be different, you know? So whatever you see on YouTube, you know, just, you don't have to follow it. And then if you're kind of upset that it didn't work, um, just, just be aware that whatever they do, just take it as a guideline and you kind of do your own thing because it's your own space. So you want to make sure that you could do something for your creative environment, right? So example for that, I would say when I got the mood lights, they said, don't put it around the acoustic panels. I'm not sure why, but I did that because I, I thought it looked pretty cool and it works to be fair. And I, I really like it. So that's the main thing. Right. Um, so now I'm going to go on to actually my speakers, you know, and how important the listening environment is. So as you saw in the first image, I had my speakers kind of one to the right and one at the top basically, you know, so they were like this and that back then seemed like it was the best thing to do. I mean, if you're listening like that, it's amazing, you know, but I'll be listening like this. So I need them directly in front of me. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had them on stands and they were kind of at the back, you know, but the only thing was they were obstructed by my laptop. I had some papers, I had a notebook and I thought I can hear it. It's fine. You know, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that going onto YouTube and I've started seeing other people and I was thinking, wait, they have theirs kind of more in an equilateral triangle. So I started to research and I figured out that, oh, hold on. This equilateral triangle is actually a very useful point. And again, I learned it from YouTube and that was basically, you have to make sure you're in a great listening position, you know? So I'd say kind of in the middle of both the speakers. And then what you want to do is you want to get kind of like a measuring tape and just measure the distance between your left speaker to the right speaker, the right speaker to your right ear, and then your left ear to the left speaker. And everything should be equilateral. So in, in my studio, it is 78 centimeters that way, 78 this way, and 78 that way. And again, this being 78 is not going to be the same in your studio. Um, it would depend on your desk and your kind of, you know, where everything's kind of placed but yeah for my studio it worked to 78 by 78 so that's what i did and again youtube was a great way to learn that and also i took the speakers off the stands to make sure that they're at ear level and that was actually placing them on my um the top ledge of my desk you know if you don't have a top ledge then you could buy other kind of big stands or you could buy just a like the the best thing that we did back in the day is we got a plank of wood from a hardware store you know, we got some brackets and we just put it on the wall and it, it worked. It was still ear level. Obviously, I didn't know exactly what to do back then. But, you know, just by watching people on YouTube and stuff and getting inspiration from other people, it made sense to just have them against the wall. And that's what I do. So you want to have a clear line of sight. You know, you want to make sure nothing's kind of in the way obstructing. And um, it, it honestly, like when I did that and I, I heard the difference, I was like, wow, I've been having them on stands and like not in, in, in ear level for so long. Have I been mixing wrong? Have I been making music wrong? But luckily I found that fault and I fixed it and it works for my studio. And you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's now it sounds great. So from that point onwards, I'm going to move on to now my acoustic treatment or kind of the slight acoustic treatment I do have. Um, as you saw my final day seven pictures, I had some black foam panels and I put them together and I just placed them randomly in the room, right? Cause I thought that, that, that would trap the reflections, but actually, I was a little bit wrong and there still was echoes it still was reverb natural reverb and i was thinking ah oh, man this is it's kind of you know it's it's really um it's it's not working you know i could still hear yeah natural reverb so i had some rock wall panels gifted to me now these ones here um you know they were gifted to me but you can build these yourself you know i've seen a lot of people do it and i've actually done it before as well we can get kind of wood uh, like a frame as i built the studio like a small frame put some rock wall in there and then bring some um some fabric over the top tighten it up and then you've made like a panel yourself so it's such an easy option and again i keep saying it but youtube has all of this stuff you know how to build rock wall panels uh, where to place your treatment and stuff like that you know so going back to my panels i placed them in these points and the way i did that was i was sitting in my listening position so over here i had my obviously everything set up perfectly and my friend actually ran a small mirror around this size to the left hand side of the mirror of the wall and i was looking straight but as soon as i saw on the mirror that my right speaker had been shown i put a mark there i did the same on the right hand side over here and that way i've now marked out the early reflections so then me and my dad we actually put the panels 
directly on the early, early reflections and we worked our way towards the end of the middle part of the studio. As you see, I have a curtain here as well. And that was like a temporary fix of uh, when the vocalist was tracking over there, you know, it was just too much space. So I put some kind of um, thick curtains in the middle and it did help. It did help and it still does help. But, um, you know, for now, because I've got these cool rock ball panels, um, I've just I've just put them on the walls. And, and to be fair, it's perfect. Over in the, the kind of mixing area where, where Veroz is, um, social distancing from myself, <laughs> um, we have one panel over here. Now, I've done that because when I put two panels up, it sounded too damp. It sounded too dead. And I was like, you know what? That doesn't sound cool. I like natural reverb, you know? Um, I like when when some of the... I, I like air. You know, I'm a big fan of air on vocals and presence and stuff. So I didn't want to kind of get rid of the, the depth of the vocals. I didn't want them to sound too dead, you know? So we put one panel in there and it worked. And I still have kind of, if you see, I still have four foam panels there. You know, they're there because it, it kind of just added a little bit more dampening towards that side of the wall. Now, that is the acoustic mirror trick, you know. So again, just run a mirror across the wall and mark down the points where you can see the right hand speaker. And then again, on the left, and place your panels there and just see um, what that actually sounds like, you know, just it, again, it's trial and improvement. But I mean, that's something that I say that I learned from YouTube and it worked. And then after that, I had to trial and improve, you know, I had to um, put a panel in there and just see if it works. You know, I had to move stuff around. And again, I, I, I'm moving stuff in the studio all the time. I mean, the last time someone had come in here, you know, the desk was another way and the speakers again were somewhere else. So yeah, don't be afraid to keep trialing and improving your studio because your studio is um, going to be different to mine, going to be different to someone else's. So whatever works for you, works for you. Um, so for that point onwards, actually, I'm going to come on to the interface that I've got today. So this is a Focusrite, which is um, a 2i2 uh, USB-C lent by Focusrite to us. So... You know, it's got a monitor control at the front. It's got a direct monitor. It's got two XLR inputs. It's got the out at the back for my monitors. And then what I've got for today is my headphone jack plugged in over there. Now, as you see, I've got my artist today and he's going to sing and he's going to want to hear himself, but I also need to hear himself too. So I've got a little splitter. Now, this is an easy fix. Instead of buying a kind of new interface where you need two headphone outs, you know, I've, I've ended up purchasing a little splitter on Amazon for about five pounds. You know, and that fixed it because if Rose can hear himself, I can hear myself. And that's kind of what we want to do to track, you know. So again, I have my one XLR for the mic plugged in over here. I have my output, which is the left and right for my monitors. Um, and then I have kind of just a control for the input of the mic. And then I have a direct monitor input, which is what I'm going to hear on my monitors. And then I have a small headphone out just over here, which controls a splitter between mine and Verose's headphones. Now there's a 48 volt button as well, and if I if I press that, then it will allow then it will give some um, power to the mic so that it, it kind of does what it needs to do. Um, okay, cool. So this is kind of yeah. So this is all I need to get vocals from Veros into my software, you know. And going back to when I first started, there was nothing different. You know, I bought the M Audio, and the whole kind of objective when I bought that was I need to get vocals from in reality out into my software and this is does the exact same thing as that does so it's pretty cool you know because even though it's been eight years since i had that you know it, no, nothing much apart from small things really have changed in the sense of everything is still unified and it's quite easy to um control and you know i know what monitor means on there and now here and you know it's just it's, it's amazing right um now i'm going to talk about actually the vocalist and kind of when when vero sings or when an artist comes in and they want to sing. Now, how do I kind of make sure that they are comfortable with the mic positioning and kind of just the treatment around there? And what if they want to move the mic around? You know, there's, there's several options. So in my studio specifically, I have a reflection filter just in the corner over there. And that one you normally get so you can put it on the mic. But what I did is I took it off and I put it in the corner and that was like a simple fix one, you know? So today we're going to be going with that option where the mic's just in the corner and Vero is going to sing there and it's a reflection filter just at the back, you know? But the other option, which I've come across, which is really cool, is now this vocal cube. Now the vocal cube allows you to place the microphone anywhere in the room. So if you remember, I was saying, Vero sometimes likes to sit next to me, just on the left-hand side, and likes to song write. Um, and before it was an issue because I have, you know, my laptop, I have uh, my speakers, and you know, there might be some static sound that's getting picked up by the microphone, or just a fan noise. So when I found this online, 
um, this is called the vocal cue, by the way. When I found this online, I was I was very shocked because it's you know it's such an easy fix. It's just an isolation ball where you place on the microphone, and now it's kind of like having a small vocal kind of cue, yeah, I guess, on the mic um, with a pop filter as well. So you can take your pop filter off, pop this on the mic, and you can place the mic anywhere in the room, and you know it will sound like how you got it in the corner, I guess. Today we're not going to go for this option because we're going to see Rose recording the corner over there. Um, but yeah, so definitely when you when you look at your studio, have a look at the options that you can have, you know. So if you want to move your mic around the room, you don't want to keep it directly um, in the corner or with a reflection filter. Just look at the vocal cube. You know, this this was again, I went for a budget um, and this was around 25 pounds that I got. I think it was on Amazon as well. So, yeah, have a look for these the vocal cubes. So going back to the, uh, the mic position today, when when we get tracking going a bit bit later on um we're going to make sure that the vocalist is singing literally a hand distance from the mic you know sometimes i'll have a pop filter well i'll always have a pop filter on sometimes it could be the circle pop filter today we're using a lewitt 640 ts a uh, great microphone lended by um by lewitt they're great microphones and um we're not going to use the circle one because they've actually provided a pop filter that directly fits on top so there's a lot of microphones that actually would provide you kind of mesh um, pop filter or you know you could buy one again from Amazon they're about 10 pound that way it will cut out all the pops you know the peas and um, and stuff like that that the mic's going to pick up so again the Lewitt one is pretty useful pretty good but if I was not using the Lewitt microphone then I do have the circle one which I can just put on top of the tripod and um, and get that going so yeah so uh, another thing is you know for my studio specifically is i i love listening to music in here you know i i love um hearing kind of stuff that's on spotify on um apple music and just stuff like that just to get um just to make sure that i can you know i just to tune my ears into my room and listen to other people's music you know the best thing that i've done i think throughout my career of being in uh, just not even an avid but just in music itself and it's just listening to other people's music gaining inspiration watching YouTube um, and stuff like that. And again, um, another point that I would love to make is on YouTube, a lot of people like to say, hey, you shouldn't watch, um, you shouldn't follow exactly what they're doing. I, I get that. So if you're learning how to use a compressor or an EQ, you know, don't follow exactly their settings, but just use it as a guideline. So you learn how to use the compressor itself. Because again, the recording that the person does on YouTube is not gonna be the same recording that you would actually be doing in the studio yourself. So I would say, um, you know, learn from YouTube and then get some inspiration and always write notes. You know, I have I, I have a notebook always kind of to hand where I just write all my notes on there and just make sure that I kind of follow these notes. And if I'm like, hey, I want to I want to buy that light. I'm, I've made sure that I've actually wrote it down and that light might give me some inspiration in the future. You know, so, yeah, again, just always learn from YouTube and trial and improvement is kind of the biggest thing that I will say from from today's webinar. It's very important. So, yeah. Um, so today, actually, we're gonna we're gonna track some vocals, and they're gonna be Rose's vocals on a track. Um, and the first thing that I want to do, actually, is I want to um, is I want to just talk about the the session that I that I have today. So I have this track here. So I've been lucky to work with people like Rose before, and we've we've made many singles before. You know, we've got on playlists on Spotify, Apple's iTunes, um, number one before. And we've cut loads of records before in the past. So working rows, it's been amazing. And uh, we've got this record here today as well, which is called Chosen. Um, it's more like a pop record. And you know, today we're gonna actually track his verse today. So again, going back to my focus, right? What I want to make sure that I've done is I want to make sure that I've got, you know, the mic in. So sorry, Rose, if you mind just going to the mic one second and just giving me a signal. So when he sings. One, two. You know the light comes on straight away and i think this is just just having that indication shows okay my mic's connected it's working everything's fine 48 volts is on because it's giving phantom power to the microphone to allow it to actually you know give some single signal um again it's a great way now there's actually a button over here called direct monitor so if if that is on right so now i can actually control the, the signal that's that Rose is singing, he can actually hear himself now. So if you go into Pro Tools over here and go up to Options and go to Low Latency Mode and Monitoring is actually on. So what Low Latency does, Low Latency mutes the output of the record track so that the signal is not doubled, right? Because Rose wants to hear himself, I want to hear him. And again, on the splitter, 
we've got the signal split now because I can hear him and then he can hear himself too, you know? So today I've created a track over here called tracking and tracking is basically just kind of recording verse, you know? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select input one, because as you saw, I've selected it in, I've um, inputted it in input one over here, the XLR, and now I've got tracking there, right? So as you know, to record, you record enable the tracking track and then you record. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna just bring up a track preset. Now this is an amazing feature, right? So if you bring up track presets, I've actually created one just in the folder over here. So this is my workspace guys. And I've got loads of track presets, which I've created before. You know, I've got um, Goraz vocal star. I've got a reverb bus. I've got many like channel strips and delays. They're just settings that I've saved from previous sessions that sounded great. So um, I've had artists like Rose or other people come in before and they've been like, hey man, can you save that vocal chain? Because it sounds great. And I'm like, oh wow, yeah, of course I can. So I'll bring it up in another session so that we don't have to kind of go through the creating that chain again. It's already done and I can tweak it myself. So today I've actually got this reverb bus and I'm gonna drag that in. And now this is something that I created maybe last year, you know, it's a simple D-verb um, D-verb on a bus, on a, on a bus, you know, and what I'm going to do is for tracking, I'm actually going to create, a, I'm going to go to a send and I'm going to add the reverb just over here. And I'm actually going to pop it up a little bit just so we get some reverb. I'm going to record enable the track. So again, I could do that by pressing shift R or simply just pressing the little red icon there. So, uh, Rose, if you mind just singing and just hear if you can hear yourself. One, two. Myself. amazing is that good with reverb yeah perfect. yeah cool so if it wasn't i could again bring it up or bring it down so i'm going to leave it about there because i think that's quite a nice signal you know and what i'm gonna do actually guys i'm going to show you the track itself so like i said we know we've got a, tr a track we've chosen um it's semi-finished i'd say you know we still got some stuff to do on it but um i'll play it from the drop actually just so you guys can hear exactly what it sounds like So that's our that's our track called Chosen. You know, it was actually produced by myself, Rose, and a great producer called Bajaj Music. Um, he's got many kind of number ones. You know, he's done so much music as well. So uh, we work together and we work on a lot of kind of music, kind of pretty much every other day. <laughs> so today we're going to record Rose's uh, verse on this track. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a playlist. And the way we like to work is I like to comp Rose's vocal. So I get him to do three or four takes around something, and with that, it gives me the feature to grab certain words from a good take. And if you've done a bad take, then I can kind of get rid of that and I can compile it into one amazing take, you know, and that's what we like to do in playlist mode. So if I come over here to the tracking, you can see a small arrow. If I just select that and go to oh, new, and now it's created a new playlist. Now I want to see this playlist as well. So if I go to waveform, just select that and select playlists you can see now it's got tracking you know it's, it's as he records it's going to start adding more audio files downwards so i want to just make sure that i highlight verse here you know uh, so i'm going to come over actually to grid mode so the top left i select grid mode i'm just going to make sure that i've got the verse selected there Got it over there. So Veroz, I'm gonna bring you in. We're gonna do one take, um, and then we're gonna do a few more takes just after that for the verse. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. perfect. So let's go. Baby, I'm done waiting. I feel my heart racing. I've been trying to heal yours, but this mind is breaking. Although I try contain it. Nothing helps to change it It's been going on for too long, too long That was amazing. Perfect. And now we're going to do another take on top. You could have this in loop as well, but I mean, when we like to track, we do it like this and we just do a few and then we kind of start chopping and adding them on top. But I'll show you guys what we normally would do. Coming again, Rose, yeah? 
Baby, I'm done waiting. I feel my heart racing. I've been trying to heal yours, but it's mine that's breaking. Although I try to contain it, nothing helps to change it. It's been going on for too long, too long. Amazing. And uh, maybe just one more. Baby, I'm done waiting. I feel my heart racing. I've been trying to heal yours, but it's mine that's breaking. Although I try to contain it, nothing helps to change it. It's been going on for too long, too long. Now you can see that we've got some files here now, actually, uh, which have been created, and they're Verose's uh, takes. Um, so what we normally would do is actually we'd actually go through kind of each syllable or each kind of word and then we just highlight it and kind of drag it up so that we can kind of overwrite the original file you see so i'm going to change this back over to slip mode just over here let's say if we like that section there we just bring it up and as you see the lead the the, the final lead now has actually become what we like so just to make it easy for you guys actually i'm gonna just put everything into a folder so uh, just so you can all see the tracking itself so i've selected all my kind of elements of the track i right click here and i just head down to move to a new folder i'm going to change i'm going to name, name it basic folder but you could have a routing folder where you can actually route all the audio into that folder but for this i'm just going to do it for hiding purposes and i'm going to call this chosen and i'm going to click create now as you see everything over here is now gone into a folder and i can close that folder now as you see it's so much easier for you guys to see um so when we're actually tracking you know um we can't track with too much on that tracking folder because what i like to do is when i've got the lead or the take that i really like i've already got a chain which i was talking about before which has got a lot of my plugins for rose's actual for his vocals so he would use this in in a normal kind of um session with me you know so we would track and we like what we've got here you know we've already we've already um comped it and we just bring it down and then we can actually just um play with that so now going back what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get rid of this over here rose are you okay to record the pre-chorus sure amazing so i'm going to put this back in record enable mode and i'm going to bring rose in too long I can't help but feel like you're chosen You're the one that I know it And I feel it most when I'm close to you Each night with you is a moment Where you hold my focus And I don't want no one cause I've chosen you Amazing Um, we could... Yep, yeah. try one more time Sure Yep yeah. <laughs> Too long Cause I can't help but feel like you're chosen You're the one that I know it And I feel it most When I'm close to you Each night with you is a moment When you hold my focus And I don't want no one Cause I've chosen you That was a great take um, So yeah, again, so now we record the pre-chorus what we could do um, is we could just bring that down now to Verose 2. And actually, we've actually created, you know, we've got his chorus. Uh, sorry, we've got his pre-chorus. We've got the verse. And then what we like to do all the time is as we're songwriting or if we're kind of making the track, we like to do some, would you say ad-libs or would you yeah. like to do some harmonies? Ad-libs, yeah. harmonies. For the pre-chorus? Sure. Cool. cool. Perfect. Actually, I'll bring it in from halfway through the verse and then you, okay. you can take it from there. So we're going to track some uh, BBs or harmonies now. Although I try to contain it, nothing helps to change it. It's been going on for too long, too long. Cause I can't help but feel like you're chosen. You're the one that I know it. And I feel it most when I'm close to you. Each night with you is a moment when you hold my focus. And I don't want no one cause I've chosen you. 
So once we've done that, that was a great take for us. Loved it. Um, I'm just going to basically just get rid of everything. Actually, the best way to do this is if you press Command and U, you can bring up this amazing strip silence. And now it's actually just going to, you can use this over here and just strip out the parts that you don't need. Now, there we go. Perfect. And now if I bring this down to BV, and again, it's a track preset that I had from before. Um, and I've made it and I've just bought it in, you know. So I'm going to actually just add a reverb send over here. And just uh, crank that up to about there. Do the same over here. And with BVs, I love them wide. Um, you know, I love them to sound like they're kind of just around you, I'd say. <laughs> so I'm just going to add one more here. Awesome. So now I'll play you guys back the track. Baby, I'm done waiting. I feel my heart racing. I've been trying to heal yours, but it's mine that's breaking. Although I try to contain it, nothing helps to change it. It's been going on for too long, too long. Cause I can't help but feel like you're chosen You're the one that I know it. And I feel it most when I'm close to you Each night with you is a moment When you hold my focus And I don't want no one cause I've chosen you And that pretty much is how we would track. And obviously from this point onwards, we'd slowly start mixing it. We'd add some elements. We'd use stuff like expand to create layers um, of sounds. You know, we'd, we'd have pads and stuff on top. And we just start building from this point onwards um, to the point we get to a fi final kind of track. And um, that is kind of how I, would, how I would track vocals. And thank you for Rose for singing great vocals there. It was amazing, easy. And um, yeah, and I hope I've, I've, I hope I've helped with uh, um, having a, great creative environment and again what i would say is just um head over to youtube you know never be afraid of using kind of the tools that we've got like youtube and stuff like that because obviously back in 2012 we still had youtube but um there wasn't as much material as there is today you know google and youtube they provide us with so much stuff that we can actually go out there and actually you know learn about this stuff so easily that you don't have to kind of pay professionals to come in and do it for you you can just learn so simply and um yeah all these tools are right in our kind of arms reach so again you know thank you for watching um me show my my studio <laughs> thank you um uh just wanted to say thank you guys very much uh gorav Veros. that the track sounds amazing we've got some great comments and questions coming in from across all the platforms um so again thank you for that uh, so we're going to jump right into q a we've got a little bit of time for for some of the questions so uh, one of the first questions that got asked, um, I believe it came in from LinkedIn, was so you actually covered a bit talking about, you know, Gorav talking about some of the basic studio equipment that you're using. Um, but the second part of that question was really surrounding um, finding clients as a freelancer. So I wanted to know if you had any, any, uh, any comments around how, you know, obviously you've got a pretty tight knit squad and group yeah. of folks that you produce and work with, but uh, you know, as you, if you're looking for, for other folks to work with, is there, a, is there a way you do that? How do you typically tend to handle that? Yeah. I mean, I, um, as a lot of my colleagues know, a lot of my friends know, I love Instagram, you know, again, having a free platform where you can reach out to people so easily. Um, I've used that for everything. You know, we, we, I mean, like Rose over here, he lives five minutes away, but we still met from a mutual friend from Instagram. Um, you know, we rely so heavily on Instagram to find our c clients and um, just find our team. And my advice with that will be kind of just like, eventually it will come, you know, I mean, I was working alone, trying to songwrite, sing, do everything at once uh, to the point where I was like, you know what, I kind of need a team of people where we can, uh, everyone has their role and it, eventually it does come. Um, again, it's just using all the online platforms that you have, Twitter, Instagram, everything's kind of there. So yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, just stick to being kind of present on Instagram, 
and just you know using hashtags and finding hashtags um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Great. So I'll add a couple of other quick things there. Um, so Avid Link, uh, which we have, you know, here is a so our, our kind of uh, you know collaboration platform. It's a great way for you to find uh, folks, not just within the Avid community, but folks, you know, just musicians and, and producers, engineers all over the world. It's a you know free application that you can download uh, from the Avid site. So make sure you uh, grab that if you wanted to, to to start looking for other folks to possibly collaborate with. But I think yeah, certainly what you mentioned, Gaurav, is is absolutely true. Um, kind of going back to the YouTube thing as well, I wanted to quickly mention that obviously you know it's 2020 now. We you know the internet's been around a, a long while now, and uh, there's a lot of content out there. You know, and I wanted to quickly just make sure I, I point back to you guys, to Gorav, you and and the rest of the product specialist team that you guys have created a, a really amazing uh, platform with your uh, Pro Tools Tech Tips, uh, which are these uh, like you know two one minute two minute videos that are very quick, but really explain so much. Um, of uh, what's happening in the, on the Pro Tools platform. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out. You can go to avid.com slash Pro Tools Tech Tips. Um, so we've got some other questions. So um, someone wanted to know if you're using low latency monitoring in, uh, in the session when you were tracking uh, yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. So I had uh, low latency monitoring on. Um, we did that kind of, again, primarily so we can use the direct monitor mode on, on Focusrite itself. Um, and then, you know, Rose could, could um, hear himself. I could hear him as well. So yeah, that's just in the options menu on Pro Tools. So if you go up to options, you can just see low latency mode uh, monitoring. And if you turn it on, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, over in, uh, looks like it was Facebook. How did you decide the monitor height? So we know, we, we know you've got your kind of equilateral triangle yep. situation for the, for the spacing of the monitors. But as far as the monitor height, how'd you decide that? Um, well, actually, <laughs> it's a funny story. So we got a, um, I mean, so first of all, they had to be at ear level. Um, so my dad had like a little platform thing and he popped a level on there, just made sure it, it was kind of in level of my ears. And to be fair, it was, and you know, his, um, his little technique that he had <laughs> worked, but yeah, again, it's just like kind of making sure it's at ear level, you know, you can get kind of a, a, a ruler or a measuring tape or something, or kind of something that's straight and you can kind of just work it out that it's straight. I mean, that's what I would do. Um, Greg, is anything you'd add on top of that that you would kind of do? Well, I think yeah, I think just for 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 the actual height from the floor to the you know you, you want it to be air level. I think is yeah. pretty much uh, kind of the the the, the standard rule there. Um, you know, obviously if you're doing Atmos or something, that's a whole other different ball of wax. But for you know normal music production, you're going to want them to be at air level. But yeah, excellent. So questions are, are continue to uh, to roll in. Uh, one of the questions here is, what are your search terms on YouTube? Oh, um, it varies. It does vary. You know, some, I mean, kind of day in, day out, I watch, uh, again, kind of like things like Pro Tools top tips, even I'm learning from them. A little things like playlist shortcuts and, you know, recording shortcuts and stuff like that. There's so much stuff in there. But I mean, I, it really depends. Sometimes it's kind of like um, how to record clean vocals, you know, it, it depends on what the objective is, I guess. So if I was, if I wanted to learn about speakers and again, it will be based on speaker placement, you know, um, and I'll just filter through. So sometimes I just sit there on my iPad and I just keep watching videos, keep watching videos, you know, and I watch about five or six about around one kind of topic, because if you watch one, you might get cited to that one specific kind of technique. But if you watch five or six, again, you're, 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 you're kind of, you're open to so many different kind of, um, areas around that one topic. And again, writing notes is so essential for me. I'm always writing notes off YouTube because again, if I want to come back to, I have, I have a memory of a, of a fish, you know, <laughs> I don't remember things. So I have to write down notes so that I can come back to it and I could, um, yeah. And I know I was, Oh yeah, I remember that technique. So yeah. You, and just write maybe the, the, and subscribe to whoever it is, <laughs> you know, see cool. if they come up with new stuff in the future. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thanks Gaurav. So, uh, Joe Dunham had a question. Um, said, uh, you mentioned that you snake your cables. Do you find that you experience any interference with multiple cables running parallel to each other in the snake? I, I haven't experienced that yet. Um, I mean, I haven't got, I mean, I've had, I've put five or six cables in a snake before, uh, and that still didn't cause any issues, but I have at the minute now, they're kind of more separated because I've had to move st stuff around. So I'd say no, but I know a lot of people have had it before when they've had kind of like two kettle cables in one snake, you know, and that's causing an issue for me specifically, again, it was trial and improvement. 
it worked. Nothing really caused an issue, but sometimes, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think one of the things you want to be cognizant there as well is you know using using good quality cables, especially if they're going to be sitting yeah. next to each other. They want you want you want to have good shielded cable, depending on the cable type it is, uh, which will help mitigate uh, any any possible interference. Um, so we've got some other questions coming rolling through here. Um, do you mix on headphones at all, Gora? Um, I reference on headphones. I I normally have my my Genelec monitors which I have in front of me. I have some PC twenty pound um, speakers which I have also in front of me and also I have my headphones as well at hand so I can just reference between but specifically I wouldn't mix on my headphones unless I was traveling um, unless my one of the artists I'm working with needed something really quick like a demo then I can quickly do that on my headphones it's, it's headphones I see more as a um, thing for when I'm traveling and stuff and if I'm tracking but I love using my monitors you know it's just I, just, I feel way more comfortable um, just being because because I've got the panels up and you know it just makes me feel a bit more comfortable for listening and mixing. Cool. Uh, we've got a question here from Rick Tozek. Apologies if I if I uh, you know mispronounced your your last name there. Uh, but Rick said uh, you mentioned a bass trap in your build slides. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about a little bit more about that? And wanted to let you know. Good job with the session. Okay. Thank you, uh, Rick. <laughs> um, yeah. So the f when, on day seven, if you remember, I had like a small bass trap. I had no idea why I did that. Again, I saw it on YouTube. And then um, someone told me when I was like, hey man, like something's going on with the low end in my room. And I, I couldn't really suss it out what it was. And I was on YouTube, I was on Google all night. And I was trying to ask my colleagues as well. Um, and be like, what can I do? What can I do? And someone recommended that I should get like a, a, a bigger bass trap to just trap the, like, the, the low frequency, just make sure... Um, yeah the low end just sounds better now when i put these bigger traps in it just sounds better specifically i don't know exactly what it's doing um again it was trial and improvement for my studio uh, being a home studio i wasn't sure exactly where i should place them and stuff like that but i've just had to move them around you know they i purchased them on a kind of uk site uk foam and they kind of create them to your actual like kind of the dimensions you give them yeah so that was kind of what I did with, with the new traps that I've got now. Um, they're only on kind of one, two, and then three because I got rid of the one that was in the corner and placed it with a reflection filter. And again, I probably will get rid of that very soon and put the base, the other base trap there. So I've got all four corners kind of sorted out. But at the minute, I'm always, again, transitioning to make my final creative space. <laughs> cool. Thanks for that. So we've got another one. So you, you talked about it a little bit in, in, in the build, but maybe it might be kind of interesting to maybe hear from Verose as well. Okay. on this next question which is any tips on making an artist comfortable in a home studio so maybe that i'll open it up to, to both of you actually um wow <laughs> i think in terms of being an artist in a studio uh girls actually done a really good job in, in terms of you know the lighting is one of the main things um i think lighting for artists just gets them in a certain mood um, can really set the tone for a writing session or a recording session um, and even just having like a spacious environment, a spacious, clean environment that you can feel comfortable relaxing in. Um, like me, I'll come in here, I've taken off my shoes and it feels like home. <laughs> so I feel like that's always a good thing for producers um, to actually make like an artist feel welcome in a studio. That way it actually allows them to express what they're doing because singing is such an emotional thing and they should be able to do that comfortably. Great. Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for that. And always have always have uh, lots of supply of water is what I'd say as well. <laughs> That's essential for sure. Uh, so we got I think we've got time for one or two more. Um, one of the questions that came in, Gorav, are you uh, in your room? Are you using a sub a subwoofer? Um, I am normally. Um, I've actually got it off at the minute, but again, I've got a Genelec sub. Uh, that's connected to my Genelex sometimes. I found it in my room because my room's quite, it's not a huge room. It wasn't essential. And I felt like sometimes when I was mixing, I was mixing my low end. It, I just had too much freedom with the low end because I've got the sub sitting there. And I felt like when I was creating beats or I was even mixing kind of a bass that I've got for somewhere else, I was making it sound too thick, you know, because I, I wanted it to pop through the bit for the subs. So I felt like when I took it off and I just used my monitors, I had a better mixing um, experience for my for my low end. But yeah, I do have a sub. <laughs> Excellent. So um, one last, I think we've got time for one more. Um, so, um, you know, when you, when you had the, the, the room built and you, now you're, you're spending time in there, how long did it take you? So it's a kind of a two-parter. One, how long did it take you to get used to the new room? That's the first part of the question. Yep. And then I'll follow up with the second part after you answer okay. that part. Um, so it, I, if I'm honest with you, it took quite a while because I wasn't used to 
um, I was used to having a small box, you know, it was literally a tiny room. It was so easy kind of to treat or just to kind of deaden the sound because it, it was tiny. It was really, really small. Um, whereas as it got bigger, I was just, I, I, f I felt a little bit like, oh, wow, wow, man, there's so much more room now. Like, where's the reflections now? You know, how do I find these reflections? So I'd say it took me a good two months um, to get to the point where I could be like, ah, you know what? Now my listening environment is great. Um, and that was kind of just, again, trial and error. You know, I was ringing up colleagues. I was FaceTiming engineers from, because I'm from London. I was ringing up producing engineers from um, the USA and stuff like that. And just, just asking them what they thought as well. Awesome. So second part to that question, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it there, is, you know, um, on a scale of one to 10, how much did you feel your, your, your mixing and creative environment improved? You know, one being no, not at all, all to 10 being like just totally, uh, you know, totally mind blowing and, 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 and changing. Uh, improved from kind of when I first began? From, yeah, from your first okay. uh, iteration of the room. Wow, um, huge, huge amount. I think because I focus more on like, so before when I had the studio, I was just placing stuff where I thought, and it did, it did trap some of the reflections, but I didn't look into it properly. And again, I was always like, oh man, it's gonna be expensive. I'm gonna have to hire someone to come in and do it. But I, I mean, my, my dad's all about the kind of, look, go do it yourself. You can figure it out. If someone else could do it, you can probably do a smaller version, but you can do it. So, you know, I spent kind of in lockdown so much time on my hands, but I just was um, Googling different options, you know, how to build, how to do this, how to do that. Um, and luckily I was gifted, but if I wasn't, then it, I would have just made them. And that's probably what I'd say. But yeah, it definitely has helped. I mean, it's just, again, it's just, I, I, I see it more when people come to record and we could get a track recorded within like, tw like even the recordings we did today, we're, we're, we're happy with them, you know, once you've gone through them and then yeah. it doesn't take long. Whereas before you take longer because it's like, hey, it doesn't sound right. Or the mic's picking up too much low end or this is happening. That's happening. So now it's a bit more kind of unified and a bit more um, structured. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, Gorav and Veroz, thank you guys so very much for that. That was amazing. We are at the end of, of, of our time, but again, thank you so very much. And thank you to all of you who joined us here um, uh, on the, uh, for the uh, community audio webinar. Uh, this will be kind of living on demand. So make sure you, you know, if you happen to miss it or I want to recommend it to some friends, make sure you, uh, you do that. Uh, for those of you who registered, we'll be sending out an email uh, following up. So you, you, you have the link to that. Um, and uh, yeah, just guys, thank you very much. We'll be back. We've got more webinars planned over the next course of the next few months. So make sure you hang out and, uh, and, and come back for more. We're, we're going to be covering uh, a lot of other things. Again, thank you, Gaurav. Thank you, Veroz. And again, thank you to all of you. Continue to stay safe, and we'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, everyone.